Okay. That's Tim. I may be here all air until the night, but I will not put it down until he settles it with me. Then? I have in there on my desk right now, I was looking at the, the other day, uh, this got kicked off from, from a term, from a simple term called diversify. In the legal, in the legal realm, I'm going to diversify. I got money in this, I got money in that, I got money in this. It's like we're running into events.
then start to work. Oh, that was cute! Oh, <laughs> Every day. 
every day. Every day. Every day. Anybody else do that? Yeah, sure. Uh huh. Oh. Glad to be home, then, then they're great. What? Are you glad to be home? That's a B-I-N-G-O. B-I-N-G-O. <laughs> I got that big boy's his name on it. Yeah, Brother Tim. Well, just listen to you talk. What uh, coming to my mind is, I'm happy because I already had victory. Yeah. 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 It seemed like I was telling somebody just a while ago, Troy. Yes, you know, sir. we've already got it. We just ain't got to it. That's yeah. right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We've already got it. We just ain't got to it. Right. Remember, right. I, I remember the story between Lester Roloff and uh, Brother Dr. Dave Gibbs. And he, Dave Gibbs told the brother roll up. He said, we've lost, we've lost. He said, no, sir. No, sir. He said, David, and he, he lined him out there. He said, listen, we don't fight for victory. We stand in it. Amen. He right. said, we've already got it, son. He said, you know, because he told him, he said, you don't want to stay in jail no longer. He said, you misunderstand. We're not fighting for this victory. We're already got it. And we do. We just ain't already got there yet. Right. Anybody else? Yeah, Troy. Yeah, just as you use me. I mean, I love being used of the Lord to help Amen. people grow. Amen. I mean, and it causes me to grow greatly. Amen. I mean, I'm trying. Trying. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I don't have a big flock like you, but I just think of the Go knowledge the that you're obtaining. Well, there, might, that, there may be knowledge up here that got put up there. That's, that's all fine and good, but look around. We've got each other. We've got each other, and there's so much, so much importance uh, upon that. Anybody else tonight? Yeah, Miss Force. Good to be back in the country, amen. You know, I seen her at lunch. We, we were getting ready to pray over the food and everything. She came out there and she said, Oh, guess what, preacher? They're back in the country. Yeah. Yeah. The United States. Yeah, amen. They had touched down there and making their way home. Amen. Long, long ways. Yes, yes. On that same subject, we met a guy last night that he came back. All that stuff going on up north, he landed in New York City and they canceled all their flights. Told me four days for to get home. All the rental vehicles for 200 miles from station. They had a friend in New Jersey to come and pick them up, drove two hours to get When they got back to New Jersey, he had to rent a U-Haul truck and drive back to Tennessee. Wow. So them getting home safe is not a given. Right, you bet. And it's not, that's God's grace. What a, what a blessing, amen. Anybody else tonight? Was the U-Haul empty or full? <laughs> you would have to ask that when you go. Go ahead, <laughs> brother. Yeah, go ahead. Well, um, it's I'm not a church hopper or anything like that, but before we started coming here, we did go and visit a few friends' churches in different places, and I just am so thankful for this church. I love this Church, Amen. Amen. And I'm thankful for the word. I'm thankful for a good yes. pastor. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. But it's y'all. Everybody here. It, it, what you put in is what you get out. Yes. Amen. Look around. That's why I said I don't look around. Look what God's blessed us all with. Great blessing. Anybody else? Yes, you. It is also a blessing to see. Miss Jean and Miss Wanda had a good time. You know, um, Miss Wanda and Brother William always stick together, and just wherever Brother William there you are. And I'm just so happy that Miss Jean, you reach out for Miss Wanda, or Miss Wanda will reach out to you. It's just a blessing to see that, you know, uh, the church family stand together, and it's a blessing to celebrate with them. You don't have to take a big major thing. I was finding out something today. I didn't realize what's going on and everything. But somebody took, took the initiative and was sent out the letters to somebody during a difficult time. And it meant more than what you can imagine. Remember, it's the little things. go a long ways. And look, that's why I say look around the brothers and sisters we have. I, I was listening the other night when uh, Gammy talked about your sister. 
and it's good to have your sister next to you right there. Much more than just a friend. And, and it is. And, and Jean says, well, if I ain't leaving her, I'll be right there for her. And you have been, sister. And it, it means everything. And that's, a, and that's the whole point. And we have each other we lean on and bend upon and, and help and, and love and care for. Him. Anyway. Go ahead. Did you get that rough in here? <laughs> All right. Anybody else? I got some yeah. more Kleenexes at home. I brought them more, so I'm going to bring some more. It's all right. Go, go ahead, Jeff. We, we got a praise. I, I just got to tell you, uh, Julie, Julie Ann got to go to Chattanooga and stay the night. We was worried. You know, God traveled to and fro and all the stuff they did. And she come back and say, it's just like when your, your family was down there playing right. music in Florida. You go, people are going. You worry and you pray for them. But, yeah. but God, it's not a given that they'll yeah. come back safe. So, I mean, God's good to us. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Preacher. Yeah. I'm sure that Thursday night we were a big blessing at little church by going over there with the meeting. Praise the Lord. It was good to see a bunch of people in that church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's. And I, and I feel for them over, brother, man. You know, really do. You know, it's the first time I've ever been over there with them. You know, y'all pray for that church, Cornerstone, pray for them. Uh, the state didn't do them real good when they when they fixed the road up there because they didn't fix their interest coming in. And it's dangerous. It's hard. Yeah. And so when you have uh, people wanting to go to church over there and they don't know how to get off the highway to get down in there, it's yeah. just hard. And it's really hurt the church. It really has hurt them. Uh, but pray, uh, hopefully they can get that worked out. And they put a new entrance in, in the church there. <coughs> it was good. Good to be with y'all over there. Good to be. Anybody else? Yeah, Mike. I'm, I'm in God's house. I gotta thank God for what He's done. I just I think about the people here, and we've been having lessons in Sunday school. We had a lesson a couple weeks ago about Mordecai, and I'm sitting here thinking as we're talking, maybe we're here for a time such. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes. What we just talked about? Yes, sir. That's yes, what he said? No. Amen. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Man, I, I want to say I love my church, and I'm so thankful for my sister, Kelly, being to try to save me. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? <coughs> well, God is good, isn't he? Yeah. All the time. Blessed be the Lord of my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Now, before you get that up kilter and don't understand what he's talking about, think about what we're here for. You see, we do fight the devil. There's a lot of lost souls out here, Brother Jeff, that needs to be redeemed. Amen. That's what we do. We take the fight to the devil. And every time we win one, that's one he can't have. Amen. Amen. I'll never forget the nights I used to go over to the jail and preach, and, and uh, God would give me a harvest. And I'd come out of there, maybe two or three that night got saved, maybe four or five. I've had as many as 16 get saved. Amen. Amen. I come out of that jail there, no matter how many it was, whatever. But every time one got saved, I'd go out there. Brother, Brother uh, Dan Harder, he looked at me and he's like, Preacher, you're crazy. I'm sorry, maybe I am. But I'm a good crazy. Yeah. I get up here and y'all hold your ears. Woo! <laughs> That's <laughs> another one the devil can't have. Yes. Amen. 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 I warned you. I gave you a heads up. I told you I warned you. <laughs> I'm here to tell you it's worth shouting about when That's the right. loses. Yeah. We're in a battle. We're in a war. Yeah. And I think about Brother Jude when he says pulling them from the flames. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there that need us to do what we do, and that's win the lost. He who win the souls is wise. It's so important for us to be there on the front lines doing that. And uh, here's, I love this place. I love where God's got us, the, the family that we are, the whole deal. 
Wouldn't it be wonderful for other people to see what we yes. do? Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 People that need to hear and yes. see. Yes. And their hearts need to be changed. Amen. Yes. What hurt my feelings done at all? If we would bring more people in and win yes. more right. people to the Lord. Amen. Right. Oh, I'm telling you. Thank God for the opportunity. Yes. Let's go on prayer. Thank you, dear Lord, for the time, for this opportunity that we have to be here to be with our people. Lord, it is wonderful hearing the testimonies. Now, Lord, just guide, direct, be with us throughout this service tonight. Thy name be glorified and thy word declared. And Lord, ultimately, thy will, what you want, let us bend our knee to that and seek your face in it. Thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Julie, I told you at lunch today, thank you and just you for washing those dishes in there for everybody. You don't know how much that means. And the other ones that work here too, everybody that does something. Yeah. Yeah. And the good thing is you don't, don't expect anything out of what you're doing for the Lord. Yeah. Yes. And that's, that's right. what makes it straight. Amen. 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 That's right. And I love seeing people notice what you're doing. Because a lot of times he don't hear what I hear. A lot of people are scared to tell him what they tell me. And <laughs> That's I understandable. It, 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 and he knows that. We, we have that discussion all the time. So a lot of times people don't say stuff to him. They'll say, you see, I'm way down here. <laughs> but it is good to see people that know that the church is doing something. And don't think that these people riding up down the street out here ain't seeing it. I'm, I'm telling you, y'all think I'm joking about that, but I'm not. That's that's serious. When they come through out here and they see this parking lot full and they see these people coming in and out, and not only that, we're not here just from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. They still people sitting here to, to nearly 2 o'clock. Amen. Yeah, amen. And on those Tuesdays when we go to B&L, they see these parking lots full out here of people going through. What's going on? What's going on? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think that ain't working, just ask some of these visitors that you've had. Because I think some of them may have snuck in here because they just wanted to see what was going on. That's right. So don't ever think that's not what's going on. Sing them over again to make wonderful words of life. Would stand with me, please, 362. <laughs>
You, you go ahead and paint it over there when you get to. Because we're going to do this song just a little bit faster than what y'all been used to doing. Uh, if Miss Amy can keep up with it. Jail. 
Look, we had a service of about 110 folks there that night. Yep. And uh, you would be surprised. I get the fact you might have seen the jail movies on TV. It's called drama uh -huh. and everything. And uh, we had some that were uh, Muslims and stuff that didn't want to come in there where we were. And the guys, they would make them sit outside, and usually there were about three or four of them that would sit outside right there on the other side of the glass wall. And um, I didn't mind that too much because uh, y'all know me, I'm going to make some racket. <laughs> and I imagine somewhere along the lines where the Jeff, they were hearing the message that he made right there. Yeah, yeah. And all, but it was a wonderful deal. During that period of time, in about four years' time, I witnessed over 450 people come to Christ yeah, like between it and the church I was pastoring at that point in time. And it's just wonderful to watch God work. And it really is, you know, if we just get out of God's way and let him do it, yes. he'll do it. Yes. He does it well. But I remember I took Dad and Mom over there with me that night to uh, to jail. I had to get them approved. I had to run through the state and background check and all like that. Once upon a time, I used to be I used to be clear to go into any CCA prison in the country. I was, I was eligible to do that. You know, I let all that slip. I, there was two, matter of fact, in Wayne County, there's two uh, jails over there. One is Wayne County, what they call Wayne County uh, Correctional. And uh, that's where we had the boot camp. That's where we had our regular services. And then there was the CCA prison, which is on the other side of the, the ridge from that one. So they had two, they had two prisons in Wayne County, uh, Tennessee. And uh, usually what they do a lot of times is they bust up if somebody gets caught in East Tennessee, they send them to West Tennessee to go to jail. If somebody gets caught in West Tennessee, they send them to East Tennessee to go to jail. All that's by design. They don't want them fellas to have interaction with their past life or with family and things like that because a lot of those guys got in there because of the elements and influences and things like that. And so they, they, they begin to reach out to you. They begin to, uh, you know, they, they begin to connect with you. And, uh, one thing I made a, made a very uh, a collective, uh, a very determinate uh, deal that I would never do, and they would start to try to tell me, it was funny, they come up to me, they call me, they call me father, and I said, don't do that. I'm a preacher, I'm not, a, I'm not a father. That's him. I said, don't do that. You gotta remember these guys, they, all they, they know the religious world, that's all they yeah. know. Yeah. And uh, so I'd have to educate them on that, but, uh, they would come up and they'd, they'd, they'd want to tell you things. And I'd say, look, we'll talk. But I said, I don't want to know what got you in here. I don't want to know what got you in here. And the reason that is, is because if we go in it looking at it from what's wrong, we'll never do with what's right. That's right. Yeah. See, if I knew what, for instance, if I'm dealing with a guy and I know that he got in there because he messed with a child, I'm not going to be so well dealing with that guy. Mm -hmm. And it was better that I didn't know. To be honest with you, it's better. I didn't know. He said, What's your preacher? But we still have to deal with flesh. Yes. Yeah. yes. You need to understand. You need to know. Yes. And so, dealing with them, uh, I didn't, and, and there's times they try to tell me. I said, No, no, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't want to know. I said, All I need to know is that you understand you're a sinner and that you need a Savior. That we can deal with. And I would open up the scriptures, and, and sometimes, uh, it, like I said, I've had as many as 16 plus uh, this one night. I had uh, a few others that went in there with me, and I allowed them to take a few with them, and I had 13 that I personally dealt with it at, yeah. at one time. You know, it's just, you know, you're, you're in a time frame, you know, a time limit there. Right. They come forward on their own, and I asked them straight up, why'd you come? I need to be saved. Well, I can, I can deal with that, you know. Until they understand that they need to be saved, I, there's, there's not much you can do until they come to right. understand it. And they said, I, I need to be saved. Well, I'd open up the Bible and start showing them. And you know, it just, it's just a beautiful thing. But uh, in four years' time, 450 people come to Christ between that and the church I was pastoring at the time. And I just rejoice over that. I don't know how many uh, the Lord's allowed me to win. But, you know, we'll see when we get into glory. But yes. the Bible does say he who win his souls is wise. We were talking this morning about uh, a person that were praying that, you know, God would save them. And, Y'all pray that God will save them. You know, it's just, you know, we want, we want that. We want people to get saved. And uh, this week coming up is camp. Next Sunday, they're going to leave out of here after our lunch. Excuse me, make our way over to the camp. And of course, Brother Andrew's going to come over and he's going to be with us next Sunday morning. And uh, helping Brother Danny to get all the stuff over there and everything. We appreciate that. But what we're really praying for, these kids that are going away to camp, some of them, 
may need salvation. Yes, yes. And yes. some of them may be that God's getting ready to call them to something. Yes. Don't know. Yes. Well, let God do what God does. Yes. We say, well, what if it's one of yours? I'm all right with whatever God wants. Yes. Yes. I'd be a fool to stand in his way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. I just rejoice over what God does. And so I'm excited. You said you got 10 right now and possibly two more on And the boys are outnumbered. And the boys are outnumbered. Boys, y'all better step it up. <laughs> <laughs> There's only three boys and everybody else in the girls. That's all right. right. There'll be more when we get over, Dad. More when we get over, sure enough. But, but these are blessings. I'm looking forward to that. Yes. And then, of course, the last Tuesday of this month, put the Bibles together. 9 o'clock, be here. We'll make our way over there to the Bible barn. And then as we look getting into the next month and everything, you've got the overcomers that second Saturday right there, 10 o'clock, y'all be here. Yes. And uh, looking forward to that. And then of course, we're gonna have our fish fry next month and got all that going on. And just looking forward to all that. So we just, you know, we got things to do. And we think I'll be able to do that, we'll be able to do them. And then of course, we're getting ready, Brother John, to figure out something on the Christmas stuff. Amen. He looked at me the other day and said, we've got, got to be getting something nailed in on it. <laughs> well, we are. We're working on some things. And so we'll see how God's. And I know you're just July, preacher. Y'all do realize it takes time to put these things together. Yes. Sure enough. We're always having to be thinking ahead. Because if you don't, it'll come and be on you. And you're like, oh, maybe we can write cards to each other. <laughs> I don't know. We just have to see. But we do want to do something that makes an impact. We want people to really focus and think about why we're doing what we're doing. And so there's much more to that. I was talking to Troy before the service. It's not a light thing. It's not a light thing. Sometimes what you might think is insignificant and small, there's a much bigger picture, picture that's being played out before you. Yep. Yep. All right, we're gonna go over to prayer and ask the blessing upon the offering tonight. And it could be in God's house. Amen. How many of y'all glad you came tonight? Amen. I know I am. Tim, ask God bless you. Father, Lord, in heaven, we come before you tonight, Lord, just thanking you for another opportunity to be in your house. Just thank you for the many things that you are doing in this church. We ask that you be with Danny and the teens as they go to uh, camp. Just pray that their heart will be open to you, Lord, and you use them the way you need to use them. Just pray for those that are sick and afflicted in this church, Lord, that you strengthen them and they can come back and be part of us again. We just thank you for this body of believers, Lord, that love you.
Nobody would have cared if we like Jesus. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. my daddy's song. Thank you, buddy. Amen. I used to love to listen to my daddy sing it. He never got all the way through it, though. I know why. What a great God we serve. Amen. Amen. We have a lot to rejoice over and be thankful for. God's so good to us. Mm. So, so good. We'll go back to 1 Kings chapter 18. Don't worry, I just got a couple pages out of the notes tonight. Using your talk. Well, I'm going to give you three things to kind of think about what people talk about when they say, I want to hedge my bets. The first term that we use, well, first, let's, let's look at the scripture. Look at the verse here. 1 Kings 18, verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people said, how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Now the word halt here means to wobble. Kind of teetering back and forth. That's what he's talking about. Miss Sarah, she came out into the best of you this afternoon and her brother Ted's getting ready to go out and you might have noticed she's got a boot on her foot and she was kind of, had to get her balance up for a second. She was halting back and forth. Hobble, another term we use. That's what that means. Teeter back and forth. Well, I'm poor God, I'm not poor God. I'm poor God, I'm not poor God. I'm poor God, I'm not poor God. Choose you this day. Make a mind yes. up. Yes. Yes. They ever seen church age is all about fence travel. We talked about that this morning, but the terms that we use that kind of brings to light, Brother Jeff, where we're at, I want to start off tonight by diversify. Yes. This message was centered around this very word because I hear people use it about I've got to hedge my best, I've got to diversify, I've got to put a little over here and a little over here and a little this, a little that and so on and so forth. And let's be honest about it. We're doing the same thing when we talk about prepping for what's coming. Now, as you're thinking along with me tonight, I want to ask you a question. Well, first and foremost, what's coming? Can you tell me? We've all heard that it's coming, but what is it? What crash? The dollar. All right, the, the dollar crash. I'm going to let you in on a little secret right there, and I appreciate the feedback. Let you in on a little secret right there. The dollar has to crash. <clears throat> the dollar has to crash. Now, why do you say that, Richard? Why does the dollar have to crash? Because in Matthew chapter number 6, verse 24, God said you can't worship God in mammon. The reason why the dollar has to crash is because man has made money God. Amen. Anything that gets exalted above God has to crash. So money has to crash. Mankind today is looking to money. They're looking for enough money to prep and prop and prepare and so on and so forth. That's why when you hear the financial people, you've seen the commercial over and over and over, you know the dollar's going to crash, and they tell you that right in the commercial, and they said, that's why you need gold and silver. <laughs> really? So gold and silver is going to pull up the slack where the dollar crashes. Really? I don't think so. Because anything monetary will fall. Yep. Any monetary value will fall. <clears throat> I'm just being honest with you. 
I got a lot of scripture I could give you on that. I could, I could, I could take you around. I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to really get you focused in on this term, diversify. Yep. Okay. What we're actually talking about here tonight. So when I hear people talk this way, and this is the key word I've been thinking on that this message stemmed from. Diversify. Give variety to. Little flavor here, little flavor there. A variety, if you will. Diversify. Spread it around. John 14, 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So I want to ask a question. Do you believe God's word? Yes. Does God keep his word? Yes. Then what are you diversifying for? What are you laying a treasure for? What are you hedging your bets for? What are you prepping for? So while you're pondering that thought, I just want to ask you a question. Do you know your Bible? So let me remind you of some things that the children of Israel, there's a point in time where the children of Israel, where there was too many of them, Brother John. Too many of them. And God said, because there's too many of you, you can't go down and you can't have the victory because there's too many of you. I thought there's safety in numbers. I thought numbers are what is going to get the job done. The more we have, well, you know, preacher, that if Faith Baptist Church had more people, we need what God wants us to have. Amen. When I pray, I ask God, send me who you would have me to have. When I talk to people about joining this church, I say, look, don't take it out of context. I just want you to understand. I ask God to give me what he wants me to have. You can get a hold of some things that God don't want you to have. And I'm here to tell you, it can turn into a nightmare. Y'all with me tonight? So I'm not trying to hit my best. I'm not trying to diversify. I'm not trying to spread it all around. Look, when God says in his word, he goes to prepare a place for me, he means exactly what he says. And that he will come again and receive me unto himself, that where he is, where there I will be also. He means exactly what he says. And so I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to, I don't have to uh, you know, question that. No way. I believe God's word when he says there's only one way. That's Christ. That's right. Acts 4 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Mm -hmm. For there is none of their name given amongst uh, given under heaven, given amongst men whereby you must be saved. So if there's not salvation, Brother Jeff, and anything else, then what should I look to or who should I look to for my deliverance? The psalmist said, I'm going to look under the hills from which come my help, my help coming from the Lord. Who are we looking to? Who are we depending upon? Who are we trusting in? John chapter 10. Go there with me. John chapter 10, verse number 1. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. How what's she going to get there? How else are you going to get there? There's only one way. Amen. Everybody's got ideas. Everybody's got thoughts. What we didn't discover just a, about a few months back with John, his ways are not my ways and his thoughts are not my thoughts. So if there's all these other ways and all these other thoughts, where do we need to get ourselves to? That's right. Where do we need to line up with? Read on. But he that entered in by the door is the sheep, the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, he goeth before them, he goeth before them. Amen. You believe God's word? Yes. Amen. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. There is nothing going on right now that we ought to be afraid of. That's right. That's right. We don't need to worry about prepping for anything. Don't misunderstand me. We
We don't need to worry about prepping for anything. I'm going to remind you of something I learned from the Word of God. Preacher, we don't prep. We're not going to have anything when everything goes down. Really? <laughs> so your army's too, mit, too many of you and it needs to be dwindled down. Well, how are we going to get our army down? Well, what you going to do? You're going to take them down to the brook and you're going to let them drink from the brook and watch and see how they drink it. That's going to give you the idea of who you're going to keep and who you're going to send home. And all those that got down there at the brook and they cup that water in their hands and they drank like this. 300. They kept. Yeah. All the others going back to the house. What? I thought I was ready to go to battle. And I thought I was ready to get in this fight. No, you go on. Don't need you. Don't need you. Don't need me. No, God don't need me. God uses me. Thank God. Y'all with me? Listen very carefully. So 300. He gives some pictures. Right? Those pictures that the candle in it and all. They go down there. You got the little trumpets. Y'all remember? They broke those when he said the glory of the Lord and get in. Shout it out. Blew the little trumpet. Ooh, all like that. And then what happened? What do you think is going to happen when Lights go out. The internet goes down. When all this craziness sits in. And then what happened after all that happened? Getting his bunch up there after all was said and done. All those right there. See, they went up, they killed each other. And Gideon's men didn't have to raise a hand. Yep. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Would he trust the Lord? He's still got it worked out. That's right. When you trust the Lord, He's already got you victory. You just haven't got there yet. You need to understand this. It is a biblical truth that God already has it worked out. Yes. Amen. Yes. My question to you is, what do you believe? What do you believe? Do you believe it's evil to serve the Lord? But Joshua said, yeah. if you do choose you this day, whom you will serve, but as for me, my house won't serve the Lord. Systems have already been made. Mm -hmm. I don't have to wait for the lights to go out and all these other things to happen. No, hey, it's already been made. I know what I'm going to do. When that time comes, as I understand, we got to grab. We got to get gold and silver. We got to get all this other stuff. I mean, you ever read your Bible? Mm -hmm. You know what happens to gold and silver? Crashes. Ooh. They throw it in the street. That's what happens to that. Walk up. What? Yeah. If you want gold and silver, just wait around. You pick it up out of the street. I wouldn't advise it. You say, why? Just go weigh you down. It's going to be an unwanted burden. Say amen right there. That's right. That's right. You see, God's word is here for us. It's here for our enlightenment. It's for, it, it's for our education. It's to grow us, to develop us, to understand that only God is the way. That's right. When Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse number 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can live the Father but by me. What are you prepping for and who are you prepping against? Yep. Understand that. Does Jesus love you? Yeah. Does he care for you? But he that entered not by the door, or he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he go before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Are we listening? Yes. yes. And the stranger that will they not follow? But will flee, will, will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. You know why? Because they were none of his. That's right. 
Read on. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Well, that was for a certain time, Richard. That's for all time. Yep. That's for all time. Let me ask you a real, real serious question. We're learning your Bible tonight. Genesis chapter 3. You see him in the garden. Genesis chapter 2. He created man. Breathed into him. became a living soul. Genesis chapter 1. He planted it all. God said it was good. Okay? Did man have everything he needed? Yep. By Genesis chapter number one. Amen. Yes. Thank God. That's all yes. Thank God. Come on now. I said, I need y'all's help tonight. Yes. Most definitely. But we didn't have internet. Thank God. Yes. <laughs> but we didn't have Walmart. Praise the Lord. <laughs> But yes. what about Amen. what about you know the, the drugstores and such? The drugstores didn't need any of that garbage. He still got crows. That's right. He what? Say it again, brother Jim, huh? God would have told them what herb to eat if they had an ailment, but they didn't even have an ailment. So. Didn't have no ailments because you had herbs and every little thing that man needed. Same thing right there. Yeah. 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 They think they have is God. Oh, you're 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 one of those. You're one of those. Yeah, you're right. I'm one of those. One of those that believe the word of God. One of those yes. that turns to God. One of those that trust the Lord. Yes. You're right. I'm one of those. Yes. We had all that, didn't have all this, and we were in a better situation, and God said it was good. Yes. Yes. We all would have to be honest and looking at it across the landscape and say, hey, preacher, it ain't so good. I know. And we got all this other garbage out here. Yeah. So what are we trusting in? What are we relying upon? What are we looking to? How long are you going to halt between two opinions? You going to trust the Lord? You going to trust man? Well, you know, got to go to the doctors and everything. Look, go to the doctors. But there come a place in time where that doctor's going to look at you and say, Hey, we've come as far as we can come, and we can't take and do no more with you. You know what the doctor has to acknowledge? There's a hand of God. That's right. Amen. And God will do the rest. God does. Matter of fact, I'll never forget the time when the doctor told my dad, said, Mr. Scott, you'll be dead in two years. 24 years later, he was. I think he missed it about 22 years. Say amen right there. Yeah, that's right. Amen. The point is, brothers and sisters, doctors have their place, but they ain't God. That's right. There's medications. They have their place, but they ain't God. All these things. And by the way, a lot of stuff that we do, we do a lot of stuff that harms ourselves. Amen. Amen. We bring a lot of our turmoil and problems upon ourselves. Yes, sir. Let me give it to you like this. I'm the first to tell you I have harmed myself with sun drops and bags of chips. Say amen right there. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. yes sir. That's all right. You can say it on yourself, too, if you had sun drops and bags of chips growing up. Say amen right there. Amen. Growing up did. Oh, we liked it. I used to tell people, oh, I liked it when they don't. Citrus stuff would be floating around in the bottom. How many of you remember one of the glass bottles and it floated in and the stuff floated in the bottom? Woo, sun drops. Yeah, right. Oh, Middle Tennessee was full. Ran in here, we was sun drop drinkers. Same in right there. Yeah. You get one of them suckers cold. Oh, man. In the bottom. The sugar intake was through the roof. <laughs> in the bottom. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I've done a lot of damage to myself because, uh, <clears throat> As we grow, we learn, we begin to get educated and we begin to see some things differently. I want you to understand something tonight. You see, when we want to diversify, who are we looking to? Who are we trust? Yeah, that's right. That's right. She said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. What that means, Brother Jeff, if you trust him, you'll eat. Mm-hmm. You look at him, Mike, 
You're going to eat, brother. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Let me remind you of one other verse before we go to the next one. The 23rd Psalm. I'm going to cut right through it for the sake of time tonight. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know what that means? Exactly what he said in, first, or in John chapter 10, verse number 10. He's telling you right there he knows how to provide when others aren't getting it. Amen. Amen. So what are you prepping for? I thought we learned that lesson in the wilderness. I thought we learned that in the wilderness. That manna came down. When they got that manna on that day, what if they want to be lazy the next day and sleep in? And they keep a little bit extra overnight. What happened to that manna going into the next day? What's that? Yes. Yes. Well, that maggot eating stuff out in the, in the trash. It's garbage. Can't eat that, Chuck. Right? Because God said that we eat his word daily. Yep. It's a day-to-day -day process. Day-to-day -day process. Go back and read your Bible. Day-to-day -day process. Give us this day our daily bread. It is a day-to-day -day process as God provides. He gives to us. He takes care of us. I'm not trying to spread it around. <coughs> Anybody that thinks that there's any other way, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. There's another thing I want you to see, terms that we use when we start thinking this way. Double-minded man. Do you understand that the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways? A-L-L, -L, all his ways. Yep. For the sake of time, I'm going to drop down about verse number six in James one. He says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think it, it that, that he shall receive anything of the Lord. God ain't about instability. He's about stability. Mm -hmm. God wants you solid. Yep. Mike, you've been teaching those kids in the back how long now? You know why? Because you're faithful. faithful. Amen. I had somebody one time come to me and she wanted to, to take over the team. She came to me and she said, Richard, God talked to me. I always find it very uneasy when people say, God talked to me. I remember as a boy, there was a man that said he saw a 900 foot Jesus and that God came to the foot of his bed and talked to him. And I still a little hesitant and hazy about that one. Wanted to build this hospital. Of course, he told everybody he had healing powers. So why would you be building the hospital if you got healing powers? Right. Save the money, put it towards missions, and go around laying your hands on people. Yes. That's just me, though, anyways. <laughs> I digress. But here's the deal. She said, Preacher Lord, talk to me. Okay. I'm listening. She said, he wants me to take over the things. I said, really? Anything else? He, he give any any other part between here and there? No, he, he wants me to take over the things. See, she, her, her boy. She went to her boy to the front and center of the team department. Okay. And uh, by the way, uh, she uh, she was hitting miss on church. Yeah. She'd be here this Sunday and may miss two three Sundays, and then be back here. Well, if you gave her a job to do preacher, maybe she'd be, you know, be faithful to it. Maybe she'd be there. And, uh, don't work like that. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You see, the truth of the matter is, God tells me I'm to commit things to faithful people. Right. You want to do something in the church? Get faithful. Mm -hmm. That means be here. Be part. So, 23 years, Mike? Yeah. You know why Mike's dead? Because he's faithful. That's right. He's faithful. Now, I know there's other factors that go along with it. His heart and desire and determination and all that, but it's faithful. That's and there's a big part of that. He may be faithful to the things of God and doing what God's called and put, you know, being faithful. How long 
would I be your pastor if I was here and down the street and up in Nashville and traveling around preaching at all these other churches and I'd just be here about two or three Sundays out of the month and gone all the rest of the time. That's right. Well, that don't make you pastor. Being here, being faithful, being a part of. Amen. Mm -hmm. So important. I know there are certain guys that they do that. Amen. You've seen that, Brother Glenn. You've seen people travel around like that. You know, they're, they're there in the pulpit maybe twice out of the month and other people's pulpit all the other time. No. If, if that's your pulpit, if you're supposed to be, that's where you're supposed to be. Be faithful. Be faithful. Double-minded man's unstable in all his ways. You see, God doesn't need people over here and over there and everywhere. No, no. He wants people to be what he's put down. You heard me talk about my movie, I Love Facing the Giants. And what he's reminded in that movie right there is that you grow where God's plan in you. Yeah, that's until right. he moves you. That's right. Until he moves you, you stay right there. You're not about here and there and everywhere else. No, no, no. You're right where God's put you. Very important for us to understand this, learn this. James chapter 4, go there with me. From whence cometh wars and fightings among you, come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members. Lust and war, uh, you, you lust and have not, you kill, desire to have, and cannot obtain, you fight war, yet ye have not, because you ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, and, and that you may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. And by the way, before you start thinking that he's talking on the sexual side of this, that's not what he's talking about when he says adulter, adulterers and adulteresses. He's talking about those that are with the world and not to him. Yeah. He's talking about right there. Read the rest of it. Know he not that friendship with the, of the world is enmity with God. And whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world will be an enemy of God. Do you think the scripture saith in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lest the envy but he giveth more grace, whereof he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, <laughs> therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn, and weep, and let your laughter be turned unto mourning, and your joy into heaviness. Humble yourselves, therefore, uh, hum humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. So here's the deal. You either on God's side or you're not. That's right. You either with the Lord or you're not. Double minded people, Brother John, it's awful hard to do anything with. That's right. How long are you going to walk between two opinions? Hmm? And then lastly tonight, and this one I found very odd. I understand diversifying. I understand the double-mindedness. Look with me back to the text. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long fought ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. Mm -hmm. But if Baal, then follow him. Period. And the people answered him not a word. Why are they quiet? Hmm. Why do we get quiet? Well, you know, preacher. Uh, uh, you see, uh, hmm. Go to Matthew chapter 7. The third thing I want you to see tonight is opinions. Opinions mean view or judgment. View or judgment. And understand that. Okay? And by the way, we all have opinions. Yep. We've all made judgment calls based upon certain things. We look at people and we say, oh, I'm going to like that person, or oh, I'm going to keep my distance from that person. 
We do. Opinions. How, how, how long are you hop between two opinions? Make your mind up. And he said they didn't answer. They, they, they didn't say a word. Say a word. Matthew 7, 1. Judge not that you be not judged. Now, if I was going to do like a lot of people, I'd stop right there. Well, you Christians always want to judge people. Be careful. One bad thing we don't need to do is twist scripture and take things out of context. Amen. Okay? Yep. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. What is he talking about? With what judgment I judge, I shall be judged, and what will meet shall be measured to me again. What is he talking about? Well, he goes on and starts giving some examples. Verse 3. Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thy own eye? He says, you're real quick to point out somebody else's problems, but you're not really that eager to look into your own problems. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite. First, cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Now, what did he just tell you right there? He didn't tell you not to deal with what the other person is dealing with. He just said, first, get yourself in order. Get yourself in order. Meaning, when you get yourself in order, Troy, now you're more eligible to help out those around you. Right. And you'll have a better, clearer thought process on how to handle that situation. Y'all with me tonight? Yes. yes. Not stopping at judge not lest you be judged. Yes. I'm telling you, that's the wrong thinking. It's not what he's talking about, because there's sometimes you've got to make a judgment call. Yep. He's going to go on and expound on this. Yep. He don't stop here. Read on. I kept this whole passage for this very purpose. Look what he says. You hypocrites. Get rid of that beam. Get rid of that splinter. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Now, dealing with a brother, you can see, all right, I'm going to get myself in order. I want to help my brother out. I want to do it in the right spirit, the right temperament. Now we're here, we're ready to take care of this situation. Yeah. Now we're walking on down through life, and now I see somebody else down here. They've got some problems. He comes back with some different terminology and says, hey, this time, don't cast your pearl before swine. What is the most valuable thing that you have? It should be the Lord. Jesus Christ. The Bible. Yeah. That's your word. That's the word. The word of God. Yeah. And how you handle the word of God and how you deliver it and who you share it with makes a big difference. Yeah. Do you understand some people are out there just only to argue. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Ever dealt with anybody and all they want to do is argue? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. want the Bible thumpers and they want to show you up and they want to come at you in such a way, don't cast your pearl before swine. You know what you're going to do? They're going to turn and rend you. That's exactly what he said. Yeah. And they will abuse it, they will misuse it, and they'll make a mockery out of it and you're not going to get anywhere with them. But I want to help them. Good. But you need to also understand your limitations, what you can and you cannot do. That's right. That's Who's right. in control? Mm -hmm. Who's God in this ship? Amen. Mm -hmm. And if it's the Lord, learn we too and we're not to. How are we going to do that, preacher? Be sensitive to the living of the Holy Spirit of God. In Matthew 4, Jesus yeah. was led of the Holy Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Why? Because God was making an example here and he was using Jesus to do it in the process by surrendering to the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. Yep. Yep. If you listen to the Holy Spirit of God, he'll tell you sometimes, back off. Mm -hmm. Shut your mouth, Shane. Don't say anything. Yep. Hush up. Bite that tongue. Right now is not the time. But I want to say something. No! You don't say anything when God tells you not to say anything. That's right. 
And when God tells you to say something, I'm afraid to say something, say it. When God tells you to say it, you step up and you say it. Learn how to follow the Holy Spirit of God and it'll try to direct you in the right area. Yes. Right. Remember that. Yes. Who's leading here? Who's in control here? Who do we follow here? And that's what he's talking about. So don't cast your prayer before swine. Don't talk about reading you. Read on. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that, that, that asketh, receiveth, and he that find, and seeketh, findeth, and he that knocketh, it shall be opened. Now, here we are again. Remember, he's breaking this thing apart. I love Matthew chapter 7. He's breaking it all apart. There's so much here. He says, Everyone that seeketh, and he shall be opened. But what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your, shall your Father, which is in heaven, give you good things to them that ask him? Ask, seek, find. Yep. Well, who are you looking to? Mm -hmm. This is back to trusting the Lord. Trust the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding, and all thy wisdom, knowledge, and shall direct that path. Do you trust God? Yes. Man. Yes. Be careful about saying Troy. There's those times we've done. That's what I'm talking about. How long will we halt between two opinions? Yep. Are we really trusting the Lord like we need to? Or are we already trying to map out and figure out and and, and decipher on where we need to be and what we need to be and where this the other class is coming, preacher, and we've got our dollars in order, we've got to get this. What if you got your dollars in order and the class happens and everything and nobody takes a dime? Because what they have, they don't want to trade. Then what are you going to do? And no amount of money, no amount of money will cause that to change. That's right. When the dollar goes belly up, it's not worth anything. And by the way, they, they'll come to find out that those other things aren't worth anything. And the only thing that I found that is worth anything is the Lord. That's right. Amen. The Lord. Read on. Therefore, all things, whatsoever you would, that men should do to you, do you even to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So as in other words, we conduct ourselves and carry ourselves in such a fashion and a way to where if we want to give respect and give respect, you've got to give it. Say amen right there. That's right. Read on. And again, the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way to the destruction, and may there be that go in thereat. For straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads unto life, and few there be that find it. And we understand that's talking about what road are you on. Verse 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. How are you going to know that they're false prophets? How are you going to know that they're not the right kind of people? If you're stuck on verse number one. Amen. Well, let's sink in with you. you got to make a judgment call. Well, how am I going to do that, preacher? How am I going to be able to look at somebody and decide for whether they're the right kind of people or not, whether they're lying to me or not? How am I going to know what the truth is? Now you're thinking. Now you're doing some thought process. Now you're thinking. Now you're starting to put some things to mind. Yep. Read on. You should know them. You should know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Okay? He's giving you outlines, Brother Jeff. This is what you look to. This is what you use as the guidelines. You know what that does, Julie? It takes all the heavy lifting out of it. Yep. Here it is. By their fruits, you shall know them. Okay? Read on. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, and every corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast in the fire. 
Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Amen. The reason why he reentered it a second time. Verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. That's the religious crowd. Yep. Playing the game. Acting as if. Yep. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord. Yep. Don't buy into all that. Well, they did this right here and went across the goal line. That don't make them a believer. That's right. Read on. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Well, what is God's will? Well, he's not one of the in your parish. So his will is that all men would be saved. Yep. Well, how are they going to be saved? Through his son, Jesus Christ. That's right. That's what he's talking about. Read on. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name, cast out devils in thy name, of many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Not that I knew you and you lost it. I never knew you. Yeah. You were resting upon your, your actions to get it. And it ain't going to be on your actions. Didn't know you. Depart from you that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken to him that is a wise man, build himself upon a rock. The second time, listen to me very carefully. The wise man build himself upon the rock. That is an indication of the kind of guy that he is. And the foolish man builds his house upon the sand. And that's an indication of the kind of guy he is. Judgment calls are so important. So, so important. So when you start to look and size these things up, Brother Jeff, it's important for us to judge, isn't it? Yes. yes. Examine these things. Find out. Now here's where the rubber meets the road stop. For the sake of time tonight. I'm not condemning anybody and I'm not putting anybody down. But who do you trust in? <coughs> who? Do you rely upon? Y'all know that we're on the doorstep <coughs> of the collapse of the dollar. Yep. yep. Not my words. Have y'all heard that? Yes. Hmm? Yes, yes, yes. So who are you gonna trust in? <laughs> who are you gonna look to? You gonna try to figure it out? You gonna try to map it out? You trying to Get your game plan, get, get, get it all put in order, ready to go. Or are you going to look to the Lord? That's right. I'm going to be like the psalmist. I'm going to look into the hills from which come of my help, my help come from the Lord. Lord. This is a rather difficult, uh, I guess a, a, you might say a different kind of message tonight. But I want you to see, because I'm not sure what's going down over the next few days. I've heard a lot of chatter. And I'm not really concerned about what's going down over the next few days. That's not my concern. My concern is you. My concern is you. And I want the people that God's put to me, y'all, to understand there's only one way for us to escape what's fixing to happen. And that's looking to God. That's right. Amen. And in the process, we pull together as a body of believers. We pull together as a body of believers. But that's up to you. Choose you this day. Who you will serve. That's up to you. You have to decipher what you're going to and not going to. What you're going to be a part of, what you're not going to be a part of. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. Me and my house, Brother John, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. I've been seeing and thinking about this for a long time. For 20 years I've been thinking of this. And here we are coming very close to the time. The one thing God showed me, he showed me not to be selfish and self-centered in the process. He showed me there's a bigger picture at play. He showed me that his people are important and that they would need their pastor to lead them. Mm -hmm. But we don't force anybody to do anything. Along this journey is what we're about ready to embark on. You're going to have to decipher what you will and what you will not do. You'll look at this scripture right here, and Elijah does not force anybody to do anything. And the Bible says they didn't even say a word. 
It ain't time to be silent. Hmm. It's time to open up. That's right. Let's pray. Lord, as we bow before you, we say thank you for the opportunity. Please, Lord, use this for thine honor and thy glory. Help us. God is direct to see us through these days. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your promise, your word. And ultimately, for you, being who you are. Be God bring to this all the time. In Christ's name. All stand with page for the job. You understand you got one, aren't you? Yeah. Sunday morning as he was walking out the door. I said, brother, won't you come back tonight? Nope. This is all you're going to get out of me, preacher. They've been telling me for years. I said, oh boy, he used to be a great Sunday school teacher. Nope. That's it. That's all you're going to get out of me. It means he's complacent. Mm. Not a good place to be. Fearful. Not a good place to be. History. History holds you back. You're not careful. Why do we do what we do? How long are we going to walk between two opinions? Great time to follow the Lord, isn't it? Yes. Amen. Thank God for the opportunity. When we dismiss the prayer tonight, I do appreciate you being here. Keep on, you know, pray for these young people as they get ready for the camp. Yeah. Pray God has his way with them. Brother Mike dismisses the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. We thank you for the many blessings you give us, Lord. Thank you for the message you brought. Lord, may we put it in our hearts. May we not wait. Give us that strength and knowledge and understanding to know when to stand for you. When to talk and when to be quiet. And Lord, I just ask you to be with these young children as they go on to camp next week. Lord, them and every child that's in that camp, we know what an opportunity this is. Lord, we ask you to just work on their hearts. Whatever it be that you'd have them to do, commit to, whatever, you know. Lord, I just ask them to have a wonderful time, to be safe, to turn safe, and come back and tell us what a wonderful experience they've had. And may that experience just help us 
Lord, I ask you to be with everyone here in this church. I ask God for each person in this congregation. I ask you to put your arms around them. Lord, yes. Everyone here needs a hug, Lord, especially for me. Yes. And I thank you for that in advance. Lord, be with us as we go about our days, our week. Bring us back Wednesday at that next point in time. And I ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.